Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at the consolidation process when the subsidiary has preferred stock on its equity section. So when you buy a company, you technically buy its equity section. And generally speaking, so far what we saw, there are basically three types of accounts that we have to deal with. Common stock, additional paid in capital, and retained earning. And to, just to summarize, common stock and additional paid in capital is what the investors invested in the company. And retained earnings is the amount that the company earned and kept over the years, retain earnings. Those are the two main section of stockholders equity. How about if the company has preferred stock, which is that's possible. A company could have common stock, the company could have preferred stock. Well, guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna buy those preferred stock as well, but the preferred stock is a separate security than common stock. Preferred stock is a contract-based contract -based security. So when you buy the company, you're going to buy the common and you're going to pay something separately for the preferred. Now, preferred stock not owned, not purchased by the company, by the parent company, will become part of the non-controlling interest and initially recorded at the acquisition date fair value. So what's going to happen now, you are buying two different things. You are buying the common stock, additional paid in capital, retained earning. You are also buying, paying a separate price for the preferred stock. So this preferred stock add, adds a new dimension to the consolidation process since preferred stock is listed as a separate component on the equity section. Now, I'm going to do a quick review about preferred stock, really quick. But if you really want to learn about preferred stock, you want to go to my financial accounting course where I talk about preferred stock in details as well as intermediate accounting. At this point, I'm just going to mention what you need to know about preferred stock for the purpose of this advanced accounting course. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Preferred stock, it's contract-based security. So you can put anything in that contract. It's between the company, the issuing company, and the investor, the person that wants to buy, the person or the investment company. Generally speaking, preferred stock are non-voting stock. Simply put, if you own preferred stock, you cannot vote. You are not really a true owner, generally speaking. Preferred stock, they are called preferred because they have a preference in terms of dividend. Simply put, when the company pays dividend, if there's any preferred stock, any money declared as part of dividend first satisfies the preferred shareholders and anything left goes to the common shareholders. We have Again, preferred comes in many flavors. There is cumulative and non-cumulative, one part of it. There are many. There are cumulative, non-cumulative, convertible, callable, so on and so forth. But this is not a session about preferred stock. So what is the difference between prefer uh, preferred cumulative versus non-cumulative? Cumulative means if we did not pay you dividend this year, so let's assume this is year one, year two, year three. So if we did not pay dividend this year, if we did not pay dividend in year two, but if we happen to make lots of money in year three, if the preferred is cumulative, we have to go back and pay year one and year two first, then we pay year three. So kind of we owe you the money, but it's never a liability, but we owe you the money. Non-cumulative, well, guess what? If the preferred non-cumulative, we don't worry about year one and year two, we just pay you year three and we move on. So obviously the investor will prefer, will prefer cumulative. Now, for the purpose of this lesson, we don't, we don't take into account the non-cumulative part. We only say, I'm sorry, we don't take into account the cumulative. Simply put, when, we're, when we are accounting for dividend, when we are computing the dividend for the consolidation purpose, we only say the dividend for this year. So simply put, the, non, the cumulative is not relevant, is not relevant for our purpose for this session. Dividend is also stated as a percentage of a par value. So you need to know how the dividend rate. So this is called basically the dividend rate. So, so how do we 
de determine the dividend amount. For example, we would say we have preferred dividend with a $100 par value, 5%. So the dividend amount is 5% out of the $100. So the dividend per one preferred stock is $5. So this is how the dividend is declared on a preferred stock. Sometimes the dividend is stated as a dollar amount. For example, they'll tell you, you'll get $2 per share. Most of the time, it's a percentage of the par value, but it could also be a stated amount instead. For the acquisition process, we measure the, the purchase 100% at, at fair value, and this applies to preferred stock as well. So any shares not purchased will become part of the non-controlling interest, but we value everything at 100%. Now, the best way to illustrate this concept is to actually look at a complete example and see how the process works. Let's assume we're buying a sub. A parent is buying a sub. And this is the, the stockholders' equity of the sub. They have common stock of 300000 preferred stock of 100000 Notice they have $100 par value, 8%. It means each shareholder will get $8. We have 1,000 shares. So when you pay the preferred every year, you have to pay them, you owe them $8,000 per year. Additional paid in capital 400,000, retained earning 416, total equity is 1,216,000. Now here comes the parent company that wants to purchase this subsidiary. They bought 80% of the outstanding common stock and 60% of the preferred stock. So notice what's happening here. We're buying the common stock, then we are buying the preferred stock separately. The sub owns an equipment undervalued by 100,000 and nothing else, everything else, book value equal to fair value. The parent company paid 1 million for the common stock, 62,400 for the preferred stock. So let's go ahead and start to determine what is the non-controlling interest. Well, let's first find the total value for the common stock. We paid 1 million to buy 80%, 1 million divided by 80%. The total value of common stock of the company is 1,250. Well, if the of this amount, 1 million, we paid for at 80%, what's left is 250. 250 is the fair value of the non-controlling interest, common stock. We'll have to do the same thing for the preferred stock. We'll take the preferred stock, the amount that we paid divided by 60%. We find the total value of the preferred stock from the total value, we deduct 62,400, our 60%. The 40% left is 41,600, the fair value of the non-controlling interest preferred stock. Now, what is the total value for the whole company, preferred and common? The common stock is 1,250, the preferred stock 104. The total value for the whole company is 1,384,000. Now, this is the total value the fair value the book value of the company is right here so we're going to compare the fair value to the book value and determine the difference the difference is 138,000. now we are told in the problem that this company has um, a piece of equipment that's undervalued by 100,000. therefore of the 138 we're going to allocate 100,000 to the equipment and 38 remainder that's going to go to goodwill and that's it pretty much now we are ready to prepare the consolidation entry. When we consolidate, we have to remove the equity of the sub. So we're going to debit. Common stock sub, 300,000, gone. Preferred stock, 100,000, gone. Additional paid in capital, 400,000, gone. Retained earnings, 400,000, gone. All the subs account has to go away. We have to debit those accounts. Also, we're going to have to put the equipment on the books, the additional 100,000 of equipment. Then we're going to have to put the goodwill, 38,000, then we're going to remove the investment in subs common stock, which is we paid the million. Then we remove the investment in the sub preferred stock, which we paid 62,400. Then we established a non-controlling interest of 291.16, which is equal to the 250 plus 41,600. So those two together will give us this amount, 291,600. So this is how we establish the non-controlling interest and we remove the equity, we put the additional equipment, the value of the equipment, record goodwill, and remove the investment. Now, let's assume the sub earned for that particular year, year X1, 200000 and declared dividend. So notice here, I did not tell you what the amount of the dividend, but I already showed you earlier how to compute the dividend. So of the, two, the 200000 8000 which is 100000 times 8%. Now you said 
Don't you say $8 per share and we have 1,000 shares? The same thing that we can do, we can take the par value of $100 times 1,000 shares times 8%, which is here, it's 100,000. Or we can say $8 per share, 8% 8 of $100 is $8 times 1,000. Any way you know it, any way you do it, it doesn't matter. The amount of the preferred dividend is 8,000. Now, of this 8,000, remember, 60% of it goes to the parent company because the parent company owns 60% of the preferred stock. Of the 200,000, now the 200,000, 8,000 goes to the preferred. Guess what? The remainder now is technically net income that belongs to the common shareholders. Now, remember, the common shareholders of this amount, 191, 20% belong to the NCI. Now, let's go ahead and kind of reconcile everything. We said 8,000 of the preferred, 40% goes to the NCI, which is 3,200, 60% goes to the parent. This is how we distributed the preferred. Of the 192, 20% is the non-controlling interest, 38,400, and the remainder, 80%, goes to the parent, 153. Therefore, the controlling interest, what the non-controlling interest, sorry, gets 41,600. And this is 158,400 is the parent share. And hopefully if you add them up, they should add up to 200,000. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures and work at additional MCQs. Look at additional exercises. That's going to help you understand this topic. Advanced accounting by its nature, it's advanced. It's a little bit challenging. You already took financial, intermediate. Now you're at advanced. It doesn't get more advanced than that. Study hard, good luck, accounting is worth it, and stay safe.